Hello friends, my name is James. And this is my 1965 Alberg 30 Sloop Tritea. We are on a mission to sail around the world and see as much of this beautiful planet as possible. We're currently working our way through the South Pacific. I can't wait to show you everything we see. With 7,500 nautical miles behind us, traveling through Hawaii, French Polynesia, American Samoa, and Fiji since leaving Los Angeles, it was now time for the final push of the season to New Zealand. Hello friends, it is time to leave Fiji for uh, New Zealand and I'm excited to get out there. We have an 1100 nautical mile passage ahead of us and um, everything's looking good. Let's get out there and get sailing. We are clearing the barrier reef, heading out into the proper open ocean. You can already see the swells starting to come in. Be very, very light winds today, um, but we're going to motor out a ways, get safely away from land and from reefs, and um, turn off the engine and get into sailing mode. Just turn the motor off. I want to conserve our fuel in case we have to motor in some calm days. I think it's like, I don't know, 7 p.m. or something. So we've been motoring for seven hours. <clears throat> Not a lot of wind. It's, it's kind of in the direction we need. Um, the direction of our course on this passage is going to be determined by the wind, so. It's so nice to have the engine off, though. Beautiful South Pacific sunset with the crazy rays happening. And uh, making some ramen for dinner. And we're just gonna creep through the night. I think it's gonna be pretty slow sailing for the first couple days for sure. I have one reef in the main, just because I know there'll be squalls tonight. And then most of the heads all out right now. Happy to be back to ocean sailing. Very easy first night, 
we had some good sailing last night. We were doing like, I don't know, between five and six knots. I was a little shocked. I'm debating on whether or not I want to rig up the spinnaker. Yeah, I'm pretty happy, but I know it's like in the, you know, I'm comfortable right now. And like, I'm like, this is nice. I enjoy slow sailing, but come like three days from now when it's really calm, I'm going to be like, damn, why didn't I take advantage of what wind I had back then? So you always got, got to balance the sort of reasoning. Um, I do like to leave on big passages on very light winds days so that I can get back into the routine of ocean sailing without chaos. <clears throat> I find that to be nice. I've left when it's chaos and I've left when it's light and I find that it's easier for me to get back into stride on sort of initial light wind days. I think we're going to be sailing a lot with the spinnaker at least the first half of this passage because we're forecasted for very light winds. But I'm very happy to be back out on the ocean again. It gets deep, deep into your soul. And there's no, there's no feeling I can compare it to. Anyone that's been ocean sailing, specifically solo ocean sailing, where it's just you and the sea, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. It's a beautiful thing. We've had a very nice mellow day so far. Spinnaker sailing. Spinnaker was the right call. We've been doing like three to four knots most of the day. Very light winds, but we're moving at a decent pace. <clears throat> but the trick with the spinnaker, especially solo, you don't want to get caught off guard with a squall. So I've been keeping my eyes on the horizon. We've got a little patch of clouds that I'm going to keep an eye on. Usually, when there's clouds on the horizon at that distance, within about 20 minutes, they'll be to you. But that's in the regular trades, and the winds are so light right now. It may be moving slower, and it might be nothing, but that looks like a squall to me. There's another one over there, but that one would go after us, so that's the one I'm concerned about. So I'm just going to kind of hang out and watch it. You definitely don't want to get hit with 20 knots, at least I don't, with the spinnaker out by yourself. It's not fun. I have a booby bird on the bow pulpit. I've always wanted a hitchhiker, a bird hitchhiker, and I'm very excited.
having dinner. Made pasta for dinner. Easy and delicious. My booby bird is still here. Hitchhiker. Um, good day of sailing today. Flew the spinnaker for seven hours, which is, I think, the longest I've ever sailed with it. And, um, yeah, it kept us moving when very, very light winds, but we were moving between, I don't know, three and four knots all day in very light winds, like force three all day. Forecasted to have like force three winds for the next two days, which is like between seven and 11 knots. So I'll likely be flying the spinnaker every day during the daylight and then just, you know, sailing with what speed we have with the regular sails at night. Nice to be back on passage though. Very, very lovely sailing. Very, very peaceful night last night. This is like, go down in the history books of Tritea as like two of the most peaceful nights and days of sailing ever. The sea state is like being on a lake. No squalls, no drama, just Beautiful, steady sailing. Like we holding a steady pace. It's lovely. <laughs> it's lovely. Gorgeous, gorgeous sunrise this morning. Still got my booby bird sleeping on the bow. He let me peek at him a little bit and didn't fly away, which was nice. A pot of dolphins came up very lazily. Yeah, it's funny, it's been so peaceful the last two days. I'm like, what do I got in store for me at the end of this passage? <laughs> we'll see. Just gonna finish my coffee. And come 9 a.m., if we're doing less than three knots, we'll go ahead and put the spinnaker back up. Uh, otherwise, if we're doing between three and four knots, then We'll just keep sailing. I'm, I'm totally fine with the, the ground we cover making four knots average. <laughs> I had so many passages where I got my ass kicked that I'm like, you know what? I'm okay with like sailing on a lake <laughs> at four knots. That is, let's have some of that in my life as well to balance out the other. Nine a.m. on the dot, the winds fell off. <clears throat> it's very funny, and we are moving. We were doing one knot before, and now, now we're doing four knots, which is a good increase. And she looks pretty.
gonna be a very rolly night. Let's see how much sleep I get. At least the seas are pretty small. It could be a calm like this with really big seas and that would be way worse, so. Count your blessings. I have the headsail sheeted flat in case there's a little wind at night to try to get us moving. That's all I know to do. There's a sailboat on the horizon. As soon as I woke up, I walked out and felt there was a breath of wind, so I put the spinnaker up. And this boat's pretty close. They must be motoring, because there's no way they sailed up on me. Um, they're probably, I don't know, a mile and a half away. Every once in a while the spinnaker gets full and starts moving us at about a knot. But there's not much wind. And I expect what breeze there is will probably die off when the sun comes up. I don't I don't think we're gonna be doing a ton of sailing today. I would love it if we were, but the models say otherwise. Very, very large squall ahead of us. I think we'll miss it, but I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it has some wind. This yacht that I thought was motoring, I looked at it with the binoculars and he's actually sailing towards Fiji, which is a very strange thing to do this time of year. Unless he's sailing, trying to get out of the zone for cyclone season, unless he's passing Fiji. But it's very weird to be sailing from New Zealand to Fiji this time of year. Very weird. But then again, maybe he had some problems and is having to sail back to Fiji. I don't know. But he is um, not moving fast, so I don't know if he's motoring or not. We're kind of holding the same positions. And while we are not moving very fast, we are for sure sailing. I like to see, you can see our wake. It's a very happy sight after being becalmed all night. When I checked earlier, we had done 15 nautical miles from our noon position <laughs> in 12 hours. But we're creeping now. If we can get into the squall line, there's probably some wind up there. I'm at these Argentinian cruisers. I had dinner on their boat in Fiji, um, Port Dinara, <clears throat> and they made homemade pizza and it was fantastic. And they were saying, and I was watching them like make the fresh dough. And I was, uh, so I asked him about it and he was like, oh, it's super easy. You know, I'll get you the recipe. So while I was in Fiji, I was gone to La Toca, taking my fuel pump in to get fixed when they left to sell to Australia. And, um, but I came back and there was this little glass jar of dry yeast and a really nice letter and the recipe. The name of their boat is Bohemian. Um, and so he gave me the recipe and a really sweet note that goes with it. 
and I'll be cherishing these for a long time. They will go in my logbook and stay with me. Um, so it is a, a very simple recipe and he said you can make it in the oven or actually in the pan, in a Dutch oven or just on a pan. The funny thing is, Thomas, if you're watching this, um, he gave me very detailed instructions on all the ingredients and step by step how to make it, but he forgot to tell me the temperature to bake it at and how long to bake it. Uh, luckily, I was able to message Sarah and she looked up sort of like the rough idea of how to make simple bread. And um, I think it came out to being, I want to have the oven at 450 degrees Fahrenheit and I want to bake it for 25 to 30 minutes. So that's what we're going to try. Cross our fingers. Um, I think Thomas said he just makes it on the on this range top, but I'm going to go ahead and make about a little bread pan. So I can make it in that. Um, he also said in his notes that this recipe he gave me is for two loaves. And since I'm so low that I should make half of everything listed here. Um, and that will be plenty. Let's get into it and see if I can successfully make some bread. And it says we want to mix, dissolve salt and sugar in big bowl with the warm water. But I think he meant also the yeast because I don't know what, where else you would add the yeast. I think you want it to mix in at this point. So this is the part that he left out when to add the yeast. So I'm just gonna roll the dice and add it right now. Um, Cause right after this, we add the flour, so. Um, so we want one tablespoon of sugar, and that's to feed the yeast. He said that's optional, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it. And we want half a tablespoon of salt. Something along those lines. And then one tablespoon of yeast. And this says Bohemian yeast. That's the name of their boat. It's just dry yeast from what I understand. It smells very funky. Not funky. It smells yeasty. two cups of flour into this mixture. I'm gonna do it over the sink so it'll make a big mess. And they said you wanna start with a fork until it becomes obvious that you need to I guess you stir stir this up with a fork and then you start adding the rest of the flour, which is another two cups, four cups total for the solo sailor. Um, he said you, you eyeball that. Oh, I forgot the oil. I guess I can add it now. I guess I can add it now. Yeah, he said you don't have to add oil, but I want to add oil, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. It says one and a half tablespoons. There we have it. And then it says to cover this with a towel 
or a rag cloth and um, let it set for one hour minimum and then we put it in the oven okay it's been an hour we got our oven preheated let's check on our dough here a big boy fluffy big boy so now i don't know if this is what you're supposed to do but i'm going to coat the inside with olive oil um and then get the loaf in the pan and then we bake it for 25 minutes okay there's our little loaf And I think you can put some olive oil on top to make it golden. I think I don't think I have one of those brushes. We'll see. This is the first time I've ever done this. All right, all right, all right. And I have a little convection oven. It's a convection air fryer combo oven. My whole galley's electric. So we got this timer set for 25 minutes. I don't trust this like timer, so I'm gonna go ahead and set the one on my phone also. Okay, we're all set and um, see how it comes out. Our timer just went off. That is pretty. Wow, look at that. She looks very pretty. So we'll see, let it cool. And uh, I gotta start making my other vittles, but she looks great. And um, we'll see how she tastes. Let's go ahead and cut into this bread and see what it's all about. Boy, that thing is pretty, huh? Yeah, it's done inside. That's good. Fresh baked bread, so easy. This is gonna be like my go-to to take to visit to boats, you know? Cause like I'm not very good at cooking and I don't have a lot to bring. <laughs> so I can get good at making bread make banana bread and stuff. And that can take people fresh bread. That's a nice gift. This is really good. I have some plant-based chicken tenders that I made in my air fryer. Ooh, they're hot. And I got some green beans. Shoot, I need a bigger plate. The only thing I wish I had that I don't have is country gravy. That's the only thing I wish I'd made. It's too difficult. I only have two burners and things would be getting cold. Ooh, potatoes are good. I am very thankful for this life. Even becalmed in the middle of the sea. I'm very thankful for this. So, 
saw a ship's light <clears throat> on the horizon. I've been out there in the cockpit watching it. And now they're on the AIS. R-A-L-A. -A. I don't know how you say that. Sailing vessel 1.4 nautical miles away. It says their speed over ground is 6.3 knots, which means they're motoring. And that's them to us. I'll just keep an eye on them. I have the VHF on as well. If I need to hail them, but I don't know how they couldn't see me. I have my lights on and everything. Big ocean. But this is a high traffic zone. My older brother David, when he sends me shipping reports several times a day, he said there are 11 yachts ahead of me between here and New Zealand. There's 11 yachts right now. So, I'm going to get back out in the cockpit and keep an eye on these guys. Make sure they stay off of us. Well, we have wind. Squalls arrived at about 1 a.m. And it's been raining and storming since then in various degrees of intensity. The winds haven't ever gotten above 15 knots. Um, a lot of thunder and lightning though. to 30 knots right now it was for sure blown over 30 knots earlier when I went and tied the reef in the second reef none of them like forecast models showed any of this weather most of them showed it to be very calm and even becalmed right now right here and it has been like squall after squall since 1 a.m. And right now it's like, now the seas have finally stepped up in line with how high the winds have been all day. Not dangerous, it's just gotten to where it's like kind of uncomfortable because of the sea stage. So I've just been laying in my nest. I need to get up and make some ramen or something to eat. It's like six o'clock right now in the evening. But it's such chaos, it's a total pain in the ass to cook when it's like this. The 
and our course angle is okay right now. It hasn't been great all day. It's been, been pointing more west than I want to, but sometimes you got to sail with the wind you got. I guess that's a metaphor for everything in life, right? I have eyes on a tugboat. <clears throat> My brother David had told me, warned me about this dude in the middle of the night. We've been watching him. It's a big ocean. Still get close. Australian warship. Whoa. There's a warship. It's not a tug. Crazy. That's my AS alarm, which I'm happy to know is going off. been very rainy all afternoon We've had several days of very mellow good sailing no crazy squalls no crazy wind increases just good sailing um, and then this rain showed up this afternoon today we reached the halfway point <clears throat> mileage wise um, and I think we'll be in in like six days. So, creeping up, creeping up. Have some changing weather coming up in a few days. So we'll just keep keeping on the weather and adjust our cell as as needed. But yeah, it's been a really nice couple days of just steady as she goes. Holy hell, we just got hit with like 40 knots. These deadlights were underwater. And right now, I have the head so almost completely furled in. Second reef to main paid way out. And we are burying the rails. What the hell. I don't see any sense in like reefing to the third reef because I know it's just going to blow through. But maybe, I don't know. Now it's like calming a little bit. Ooh, my heart is racing. I had to like rush out the uh, starboard side winch and everything was completely underwater. I just paid out the main really far and then slipped the jib sheet, like had to reach into the sea to slip the jib sheet and um, 
furled in the uh, head sole to a handkerchief. It's very small. Very crazy. Just went and tied the third reef in. That is not easy. It's blowing 35 knots right now. Um, the seas are raging. They're, they're not real big yet. I've only, the biggest ones I've seen are maybe three meters. So they're not crazy big, but man, they are charging hard. And the winds are really going for it. But we have 10% of the head sole out and the third reef in the main, nothing else we can do, you know? Not going bare poles. So that's kind of as low as we can take it. We're still doing like six and seven knots with that little sail out. But a lot of that is these seas, I think. Well, one of my solar panels is toast. So that's a bummer. Um, and crazy. Power of the sea. I guess I should have lashed it in the middle as well. Hindsight is 2020. Bummer. <laughs> oh man, ocean sailing, huh? Very exciting. And not in a fun way. The seas are finally catching up with these big, big winds. Wow. Wild shit. Wild shit. So it's three in the morning. We are completely becalmed. It's very chilly outside. Um, I'm gonna try to get the engine started so we can motor for the next like 12 hours. There's a big storm coming that we're gonna try to get below. Still having a ton of trouble with the engine. So hopefully I can get it started. I know that the scene is going to generate many, many comments of people trying to help me diagnose the problem. What you don't see in this scene is that I've gone through and bled the system many times. I checked the fuel filter. I've had the engine for more than five years and I know it well inside and out. And yes, I am well aware that it is really bad to run the starter for that long of a period, but desperate times call for desperate measures. What it all boiled down to eventually was a major compression issue that led to its rebuild once I reached New Zealand. Well, that was a bust, which tells me we probably won't have an engine when we pull into Opua either. But now we're sailing at like two knots, so I'm just going to trim the sails and uh, try to get us pointed in the right direction. Good morning. Um, we had pretty steady, steady sailing the rest of the night <clears throat> after I got us on course. <clears throat> Winds are very light right now. Might be in vain, but I'm gonna try to fly the spinnaker, get us moving. The winds, we're gonna get hit with a front, basically, tonight and tomorrow, because we couldn't get out of the way. <clears throat> so, but the winds aren't supposed to arrive till probably 7 p.m. tonight on all models. So, 
the goal is to just try to get us creeping today and just moving so we're not bobbing around. <clears throat> I'm just not sure there's enough wind to even do that, but we'll see. Gonna go put the spinnaker up and try to get a sailing. Well, we are sailing, not really in the right direction, but we're sailing and we're moving away <coughs> from the eye of the storm, sort of. We're sailing kind of due east right now. <clears throat> we need to be sailing southeast. Very frustrating. Um, bummed about the engine, not surprised. I think it's a compression issue. Which probably means I'll probably have to have my engine rebuilt in New Zealand. I don't know, when we get there, I'll just have a mechanic come and suss it out. <clears throat> now I'm just fighting this hopeless spinnaker action which I'm about to take down, I think. It's just more headache than it's worth and it's not doing us anything. When it fills, we're doing like four knots, but again, not in the right direction. Need a long day of bobbing. I'll probably just reef the main down to like the second reef so I don't blow out the slides from all the sliding. Pretty bummed about the engine as far as like approaching New Zealand goes. My, I'm afraid that I'm gonna be becalmed for like two days, a hundred miles from New Zealand, and that would be such a bummer. If the winds circle around on the back side of this front, we might have sailing winds to get us all the way into the Bay of Islands, and then I can sort it out, even if I call for a tow at that point. Time will tell. So the winds arrived, I don't know, 11 o'clock last night. I'd reefed down early, so I didn't have to fuss with them much. Um, seems like they're coming up a bit now. I have a cup of coffee and then go on deck and tie the third reef in the mainsail. It's got two reefs in right now, just to scrap a headsail out. Today should be the worst, and then hopefully we'll be able to sail out of the, the teeth of it, but we'll see. Try to get my day started and get that business handled, and then it's just like hunker down in the nest and ride out the storm.
very, very peaceful night last night. Now we're on very low seas. Decent sailing wind. I'm going to shake the second reef out of the main here in a second. I want to keep the throttle down, get us into New Zealand. But it's supposed to be these conditions for the next three days. Winds around like 12 knots, 9 to 12 knots. They'll fluctuate a little. Um, no squalls. Well, I don't know about squalls, but no, no storms until next this coming Wednesday night. And um, the main thing is that the sea state remain low like this so that we can really use the wind to kind of fly. The wind's also going to be backing around, so we'll be running. So we've got plenty of experience at running before the wind. So. Yeah, hopefully these last next couple of days will just be kind of nice, good, fast sailing to get us in. And then we'll sort out how we're going to get into Apua. We had a very peaceful night last night of ghosting along. Winds tapered way off. And we sailed at like two knots most of the night. <clears throat> Just fine. I got some rest. Uh, starting at 6 a.m. I started working on sail configurations, trying to figure out how to get the boat moving. I think I've gone through like six different configurations at this point, but. Um, and we're actually pointed where we want to be pointed. The winds backed last night and they're continuing to back today. Um, so we'll see how long this setup lasts. Um, I expect to be in kind of late Tuesday night. This is Monday morning right now. We're 165 miles from Opua at the moment. And just trying to claw our way in after this very um, variable filled passage from Fiji. So hopefully the kite finds its way and stays full and drawing until the winds fill in and then we can go from there. started getting stuff ready for arrival. Got the fenders out, dock lines out, and all that stuff. So, um, and I've been messaging with Sarah on Iridium Go. There she is. And um, she called the marina. And there's not a tow service in New Zealand, which is unusual to me. Seems like a good money-making opportunity with so many boats there. She said, you can just call the Coast Guard, they'll tell you. Or they said, if you can get, if I can get close enough to the marina that their tender could help me, then they could do that. But that's only during business hours. So, 
the plan now. I'm, I'm actually glad I know all, all the options and whatever. The winds are coming up to 20 knots. So the plan now is to sail into the Bay of Islands and there's tons of places to anchor kind of in all directions, depending on what the wind's doing inside the, once I get into the protection of the bay. And um, sort of my first line of approach is I'm gonna sail in like and get close to the channel that I need to go down to Opua. And then if it feels like the wind's not right to sail all the way down, the other thing you gotta worry about is there's a tidal current and it's only, it's gonna be like just over a quarter of a knot at 3 a.m. But if I get in much later than that, it runs at over a knot. So then we're just flying at over a knot and we can't slow down. Um, so I'll sail in to the mouth of the channel. There's a bunch of spots to anchor right there. All the depths are like 20 feet. And if it feels sketch to try to sail down the channel to the end of the channel, which is like four miles from that point, um, to where the Q dock is, the quarantine dock. Then I'll anchor and get the dinghy on the hip and drive the boat down there and get hooked up on the dock. Um, if I get inside the bay and everything seems chill, then I will keep sailing down the channel um, and then anchor down <clears throat> once I'm through the channel right by the Q dock. Um, and at that point, I'll just go to sleep and then in the morning uh, put the dinghy on the hip and get over to the quarantine dock. That's actually what it says in one of my cruising guides. It says that if you arrive at night to just anchor and then go to the dock in the morning. I don't know why, but a third option would be if I'm sailing in and everything's perfect, then I'll sail straight up to the Q dock and just tie up. Um, and then I'll just play dumb. It's weird that they wouldn't let you tie up there. Now it's a giant isolated dock where you can't even go to shore. So it makes no sense that they wouldn't let you tie up there in the middle of the night, but um, I'll actually call port authority on the VHF when I get within range and ask for their guidance. I'll be like, um, do I have permission to tie up the quarantine dock or should I anchor and go in the morning? Go from there. So, those are the options. Not ideal. And it's funny, it's like six of one half does another. I'm glad that the winds are increasing so that we can get in quicker and get into the bay. But that's better than being becalmed right outside of there. Um, I wish they weren't increasing to 20 knots, which means the gusts will be like over 25. Uh, and the seas that come with that. But I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll just play it, play it by ear. That's where we're at. It's like 1.30 in the afternoon now. And I think we'll be in at like 3 a.m. We are 44 miles from Bay of Islands and it's like 6 p.m. right now. Storms all around. We're barely sailing at like three knots. Winds are supposed to slowly increase throughout the night, but they're supposed to be blowing 20 knots as we arrive to the bay. Increasing from there through the day to 25 knots. So having to like actively control my anxiety about the whole situation. Um, it sucks. It's stressful. It's out of my hands so there's stressing and worrying just like does nothing but causes me, you know, anxiety. Not, it's not resourceful. So I'm trying to like just stay calm about it. Not really sure what I'm gonna do when I get in. Um, 
the wind's blowing like that, I'm definitely not going to try to put the dinghy on the hip and drive it down a narrow channel. And, and I looked at the wind direction, it would be coming right down the channel. I don't know, we'll see when we get in there. Right now I'm thinking I'll probably just come in and there's one bay that I found that looks very protected. I'll probably try to go there and anchor and maybe call the Coast Guard and see if they'll tow me in. I'd rather ride out the storm on the, like, quarantine dock. And it's only, like, a four-mile tow from where I would anchor at. So, I don't know. But all of it's, like, who knows. <sighs> no when we get there. Hopefully. <laughs> the closest bit of land to us right now is, like, an island off the north, uh, North Island. Some crazy long name I can't pronounce. Um, but it's 30, 32 miles away or something right now. But I've spotted no land all day at all. Very stressful. Going this slow, knowing that like this would be perfect wind to come in on in the daylight. It looks like we'll be coming in at sunrise, so it will be daylight. It'll just be blowing a hooey. The conditions are like this when we round this point that we're sailing towards near Russell, the town of Russell. If the conditions are like this and manageable, I'm just going to sail all the way to Apua and drop the anchor over there. Good. Stoked. I think we're gonna go for it. <laughs> In New Zealand. <laughs> Woo! That is awesome. The landscape is very Lord of the Rings. Okay, we're coming up to the really tricky part. It's a big like curve and it curves into the wind. I'm gonna try to cut it real tight across these shallows so that 
when I get to the worst of it, I'll have a, maybe I'll have some way I can make straight into the marina. No way. This is the last bit, the hard bit. Having a short tack, but a little bit of wind finally came. I tried it a second ago, it had to come out. Wasn't enough wind. Let's see if there is now. There's also a car ferry going back and forth, which complicates things for me when I'm doing like one knot. Gusty. Gusty, gusty. That's good, get us moving. Give me some steerage. As long as it didn't put us in the shallows. Yeah, it's useless. I can't do it. I can't get up in there. <clears throat> I'm gonna go over here and anchor and get the dinghy on the hit. That, that'll be a lot less annoying. I've been trying to short tack up that for like an hour and I only get two tacks in. The wind's just like two on the nose. And this old boat responds very slowly. It's not like a fin keel boat. They, they can turn on a dime. <clears throat> I got us anchored in 16 feet of water. <clears throat> we are one mile from the uh, Q dock. Get the dinghy in the water, get the outboard on, get it all strapped up and good to go. Really nice Kiwi just stopped and asked me if I wanted a tow, which is awesome. Saves me a world of hurt.
On April 29th, 2017, I bought Tritea for $2,400 in the Los Angeles Harbor. She was a shell of a boat with a seized engine, but I saw endless possibilities. I slowly refit her, working paycheck to paycheck while exploring Southern California's islands between major projects. In August of 2021, I pushed off to start my slow sail around the world. Five years, seven months, and nine days later, I arrived to New Zealand. This, for me, was the first major milestone of my circumnavigation. Now it's time to explore Aotearoa. Thank you to my shore team for seeing me this far through all of the voyages. And thank you to you, the viewers, and everyone who watches and enjoys the films.